what's up y'all all right so i am waiting on a customer to get here who has locked herself out of her house again i might add i did it a couple of months ago so i'm going to and the reason they keep doing it is because they've got one of those old schlage um, f series that when you turn the inside knob if it's locked or unlocked it stays in whichever position so that is why they've locked themselves out so many times and I'm going to try to sell her a new doorknob because the new F series when you turn the interior knob it unlocks it so after I unlock it again I'm going to see if she wants to put a new lock on but I did a video earlier and I just went over and I was about to upload it but I noticed that it was very you couldn't hear anything because I was doing it at the front door and the door was open and of course they're still doing our sidewalks so it was like in the background and you couldn't hear a thing and y'all a few of you have already said that you can't hear me very well so um what i was going to show you was this this oh customer's here this is my lishy key cutter we'll talk about it in a minute All right, well, that uh, went fairly quick. So, uh, uh, yeah, I opened it. She didn't need a new doorknob, and uh, she's just gonna get some spare keys made. Anyway, my Lishy, yes, we've already opened it. I opened it the wrong way, but it comes with this custom molded plastic case. Uh, sort of, it's just a piece of rubber that's cut out or foam. But even when you lose that, you can still use it like that. It's already got a crack in it. So the case won't last very long. I found a fix. Yes. Especially getting thrown around in a truck because that's where I just, what I just did was I threw it around in a truck and it immediately cracked the, okay, it's gotta go. It's got to go that way. Yeah. But let's look at the tool itself. Who cares about the case, right? And you may have seen this on other videos. I know a few of the other guys have ordered these and talked about them. But my perspective here, um, instead of trying to go over what I went over in the other video that you couldn't hear, Lishy Man, uh, pretty, looks authentic, but they could easily just change up one little part of that. And it could be a clone, but we're just going to presume this one is a legit. Also, in the other video, I pointed out that if your hand is choked up on that and you get it caught, it is going to hurt. That is a pincher, or what I say, pinch. That pinch the hell at you. Pinch the hell at you. So anyway, it's got graduations, and I ordered this. I've been wanting one of these. I have long, 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 maybe for 15 or 20 years, thought about taking parts, uh, a Curtis 14 clipper, and you know, the pew, pew, pew thing, and modifying it to use with filing cabinets, but like it's one of those things I never got around to. So, or for Y11 key specifically, because most filing cabinets now are Y11 key. So, see how it works, see jaw, when you open it, is a little bit inverted there kind of pointing the in to get a good bite on the key and it just nicks it off those graduations are on there this is you know 0 0.5 0 0.6 uh yeah it's different graduations so it just depends on how deep you want to go now of course with filing cabinet keys i've cut so many of them i can pretty much get the spacing and the depths down because I mean a zero is you know no cut a one is just a little bit two is a little bit more so basically I doubt I'll use these graduations a whole lot but let's see so if that was a zero I don't even know why they put the zero on there I guess to start it now I did notice that if you're using a key with the blade on this side you would need to start it like like, like this so that your full blade is kind of resting on that surface so it doesn't distort the key. The first key I used it on 
I cut it with the Y11 like this. And because it stands off when you squeeze it in, it kind of bends it in. So I would want to do it like this if I was on the field. So if I pull, walk up to a filing cabinet and I'm like, code 325E. So I grab my thing, I pull the code, and let's see. Okay. Uh, so let's say the bidding is like two. So two is right about there. I'm doing this through the lens, so uh, say so two two four two two. Okay, that's not very deep, and I'm just kind of eyeballing the spacing. Okay, now I'm not looking through the lens. So two two. Probably want to be pretty gentle with this. So I would definitely not take like a big chunk out at a time. So if my bidding was like 22422, two, I would just go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five. So we got 222 two, two all the way across and I'd come back and bring that down it's not hard to squeeze it's got pretty good leverage of course it's a new blade so I'm just curious as to how long the blade will last so that is a fairly acceptable 22242 it's really the cuts are great the angle the angle is awesome that pretty much matches a 1011 wheel so you could practically cut just as good a key with this thing as with you could any code machine. Now it is a narrower punch, so if you're trying to nibble out a, hey, I'm not gonna do it on this key because this is nickel silver, I would stay away from that. But you'd probably have to kind of give it an angle cut, like if you were doing the wider keys, like a house key or something. Imagine you'd have to cut and then kind of like cut, cut just a little bit to give it a little bit wider angle than that naturally gives. But awesome for automotive, awesome for, I wish I, I really wish I would've had this. I mean, I had a Curtis 14 for GMs, but this may have come in handy quite a bit. So glad I finally ordered one of these. In my opinion, already worth it. All I gotta do is go cut a couple of filing cabinet keys and it is well paid for so thanks for watching guys worth something something to think about if you do a lot of filing cabinet keys i'm going to oil it down uh, but otherwise there we go sweet thanks for watching guys y'all have a good one